Oh. Very exciting show today. We have uh, a first in-studio live guest. Uh, we've got Jamie and Toby from the band Suicide. Guys, how are we today? Yeah, well, thanks for having us. Yeah, thanks. No worries, guys. Um, so just introduce yourselves, what you do in the band and all that stuff. Hey, I'm Toby. I play bass. Jamie, I play guitar. There's oh. only two of us here, unfortunately, <laughs> tonight. There's um, another three missing. Yeah, Tom, he plays guitar. Scotty's on drums and Tim's the new vocalist. Awesome, awesome. So how would you guys describe your music for those who haven't listened to it? And we'll play a little bit later on. Uh, death metal. Yeah, yeah, death metal. Awesome. I think we draw like on a whole lot of uh, other influences, but mainly death metal. Yeah. Mm. Mm. How long have you guys been a band? Uh, from the start, since like late 2010, I think the band formed with me and Tom. And then through various like member changes, we're at the lineup we are now, which is uh, new to this year actually, with a new drummer and new singer. Awesome, awesome. How do you find the change in vocals? Like, is is there much of a different vocal style happening? Or well, this is our third vocalist, I guess, in the brief history so far. We had we went from a, I guess, a more thrash vocalist with our first singer, and then our second singer brought in a lot of. Uh, raw death metal and hardcore grindcore aspects and our new singer is um, definitely like deeply rooted in sort of <clears throat> old school death metal and a, a bit, bit more harsh guttural. yeah a bit more guttural yeah, yeah I, I found that really came through to me when I was listening to the new EP uh, which is out uh, as of a couple of weeks ago I think it was Severing yeah. the Mortal Coil yeah that was uh, Severing the Mortal Coil is out uh, it was out the 24th of Feb awesome now, like, I, I listened to it I'm like this is awesome. It just reminds me of listening to the old school sort of a lot. It's kind of almost a bit Swedish, like entombed, uh, dismember, all that sort of stuff. It really took me back. It was, it was a really enjoyable experience. Oh, thanks very much. No problem. Um, so, in terms of gigging, you guys are actually on sort of a tour at the moment. Yeah. Well, we did the first leg of the Australian tour uh, in Adelaide on the weekend. Uh, and then we're back here for a week and we leave. Uh, we had a Geelong show on Saturday, but that fell through uh, due to some council stuff. And then we're leaving Sunday to drive all the way up to Rockhampton in Queensland to play a show on Thursday and then do the coast on the way down. Awesome. Man, it, su- it sounds like it sucks to get a show cancelled. H- how, how was that? We like ready to go and stuff and they just got a call? Or? Yeah, yeah, it's always a bit disappointing. But, yeah, um, it's, it's something bit... that happens occasionally, unfortunately. Yeah. This one was due to council... Restrictions oh, yeah. And yeah. It's not like a not like pr- religious protesters or anything. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing like that. Now, this one was the particular venue, the Workers Club, which is sort of just trying to get started. Has had a couple of council run-ins, and this particular one mm. was due to not having disabled toilets or something to that effect. It's annoying. It's been like the fourth or fifth show to sort of either be cancelled or shifted around due to just out like unforeseen circumstances we had the Wollongong show fall through because the booker double booked or something on that particular evening mm. so it's been frustrating but it's exciting to get out on the road again it's a shame though because we wanted to play a lot of um regional those, area. yeah regional cities mm. that a lot of bands don't hit and like, those are the shows that seem to be falling through yeah so. Ballarat Bendigo it's a bit of a disappointment yeah those but we'll get there eventually yeah road trips are always there. fun when it comes yeah. to that sort of and stuff I mean we had success like in Grafton which is like uh, northern New South Wales we had a show cancel at a house and we ended up one of the dudes ended up taking care of it that lives in Grafton and putting it on in another venue so it's like we're always thankful to people that support metal do you find do you find you get a bigger crowd playing at a further away venue than in, like in the city or something? Um, I guess like given any particular night, if it's m- like a weekend, perhaps people are always there because that's like a maybe a rare experience that bands or like touring bands will come through there. Yeah. But I guess maybe you you might not be so lucky on any given weekday that people come out due to work and I think in big cities when shows are coming through all the time sometimes people tend to take it a bit for granted because there's mm. always something to see whereas you go to a regional area where there's a show once every few months it's like an event everyone's gonna and go to it yeah yeah, yeah so, so yeah it's definitely different Sin 90.7 Ben and Alex hey joined from a couple of guys from Suicide good Aussie band hey hey, hey guys uh, so you released your uh, recent EP just a couple of uh, it's not nearly two months ago yeah nearly two months how was the writing for that how'd that go uh it was like it was a long process that 
had a revolving doors of members pretty much. It started uh, mid early last year with a lot of uh, writing and throwing out and redoing parts and sort of really consolidated when Jamie joined the ranks and brought the style further than what it was before. And uh, yeah, I think over eight months, the EP was pretty much written and ready to go. Was the style change like a welcome sort of thing or? Uh, I think it was uh, good to have fresh blood and it was definitely welcomed by like a lot of the members, although I think it took a while for some of the people that were working at the time to sort of get used to the uh, change of direction, let's say. Mm. Yeah, like I, I really felt that you, know, you can sort of see a, a real sort of um, evolution, like you're kind of really heavy sort of, uh, I don't I wouldn't say thrash because that seems a bit too narrow, but like very firm thrash influence, whereas this is sort of bringing it up to a bit heavy, a bit more death metal kind of stuff. Well, yeah, I think the band started with me and Tom having a p- pretty like straightforward vision of emulating a particular sound like late 80s, early 90s, sort of like death metal, thrash metal crossover, like pioneered by bands like, I don't know, Morbid Saint, Sepultura, mm. Demolition Hammer, Solstice, that sort of thing. But as we went forward, I think with each release and each new member that was added or, or uh, taken away, we gained some more interesting ideas and some more original ideas and progressed to like where we are in the EP at the moment where it's sort of taking on a life of its own rather than having defining influences. Mm. So much stuff happened as well during that period. We knew that would be the last recording of that lineup yeah. before it came out. Yeah, pretty much. Like the singer had Harry, he he'd said that he didn't really want to be part of the band, had like other interests and stuff. And so we kind of, uh, that we knew that going in that was going to be his last uh, release. So it definitely brought out an interesting mood, but I think he pulled like probably the best performance he ever did oh, with for us. Sure that we were really happy and stoked to have. So how do you go about finding new vocalists when you've, you've, you've written EP and then you've got a particular vocalist who's working in a particular style, has particular you know, vocal tones? How do you go about find, finding a vocalist? Do you say, we want someone who can do that? Who, who's the best can mimic that? Or you just look around for someone who can just vaguely fit just Think about idea. people you know that you think would yeah. fit the part and it's never about... Um, like, we never wanted someone to do exactly the same thing as Harry. We yeah. wanted someone that did their own thing and still fit in and contributed, you know. And it's hard, it's hard to find someone who does exactly the same thing as someone else anyway, so. I think the, interesting, the interesting thing about the, that particular scenario was that we didn't, we weren't caught aback by, by it. We knew going into the recording that we were gonna have to find someone else, so we were already shooting out feelers and stuff and getting our, like the close circle of friends we knew that were in the sort of pool to like to do auditions and all that and like we ended up going with Tim who has never been a vocalist which was strange but we knew that we'd be able to get along with him straight up and that he was committed and and uh, very enthusiastic to join the band so I think he like pushes himself to be better and better and is getting like better and better as well yeah we knew it would work you say never been a vocalist never yeah never. so he that, plays... that was his first recording no, 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 he hasn't recorded yet. New guy, man. Oh, oh, <laughs> yeah, oh okay. Keep up, Alex, keep no, up. No, it's just not happening. Um, yeah, so he hasn't recorded as of yet anything, but he's doing, like, he did Adelaide and, and Essendon uh, Fest this weekend, and we'll go on to, like, do the rest of the tour and stuff, and then uh, we're hoping to record something on tour, so hopefully some, like, people will be able to hear some of the new stuff that we've been writing. It's uh, We're pushing it even, even further than the EP in terms of, pushing ourselves it was pretty full on because we were um focusing on making the best record we could whilst thinking about how we could go on afterwards because yeah. you know the vocalist and the drummer were both leaving so we finished the record and we couldn't play shows for ages because we had to train up the new members and yeah, it was about a four month gap between the shows that just went on the weekend and uh recording so it was a lot longer gap than we would have wanted but it was like necessary to train up the new members and it came together real quick, though. Yeah. And it's probably the ma- the best, most together lineup we've ever had, to be honest. Like, since, like, I'm here representing, like, the first people involved in the band, like, it's been the best the band has been. 
for like a long time. Sin 90.7! Suicide in the studio from their new EP, Severing the Mortal Chord. Jamie and Toby, how are we? Yeah, yeah. good, good. Excellent, excellent. So we're talking a little bit about your EP just before the break. How did the recording for that go? Uh, yeah, it was good. It was uh, we, We've tried to, throughout every release, keep the recording mixed up and so not, not stick to one sort of engineer or team or like mix and master. So this was our first time on recommendation. We went with uh, Mike Deslandis. Mad Dog Mike. Yeah, Mad Dog Mike. And he killed it. He was like... Um, Totally unexpected, but Put definitely up with like, shit yeah, for three days. Definitely the best dude we've worked with so far, and uh, yeah, just knew where we were coming from, knew how to push us to get better takes and just have better performances on record, and also knew how to dial out some mean turns out of some amps. Uh, yeah, there's a lot of engineers who um they won't say you know that wasn't the best take or whatever because they're getting paid yeah. regardless. So it's really special to find an engineer who will say, you know, you can do that better, do it again, and that's not that's not the take, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, definitely someone that maybe wasn't like 100% into the music, but definitely was 100% into the idea of getting the best out of the band and just making everything better, which was cool. Because yeah, he wasn't particularly a metal guy. Yeah, but it was cool, yeah, definitely the best one we've worked with. And uh, from he and he just tracked everything all the instruments and vocals and everything, and um, and then we sent the raw tracks over to um, a friend of ours in America called Damien Herring, works out of Subterranean Watchtower Studios, and he also plays in this uh, death metal band that we really like called Horrendous, and he basically mixed and mastered the entire record with um, yeah just a few emails back and forth between us, but he was pretty much... 100% on the money with his mixes. It was just a matter of getting levels right to our taste. Yeah, real killer combo we had, and we're probably really excited to use them again sometime in the future. Awesome. Now, um, I actually, uh, I was really excited to buy your EP off Bandcamp. Um, what, what was the label? The Infernal Devastation. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah, Infernal Devastation Records out of Brisbane. He's just just started up uh, last year. Um, a dude called Chris Anning. Yeah. Legend loves it's helped us out a yeah, lot. Loves metal, loves supporting Australian metal and metal worldwide, and it was really good to be his first release and help out oh, wow. someone like that. Especially since it sold out in like two weeks from release, so we were really happy. We only did two hundred and fifty copies, but we're really happy with how quickly they've moved, and hope that reflects well on his label and you know obviously pushes him to become better and better and us to achieve more, I guess. What was the most uh, difficult part about recording? Like, what in the process? Was there anything that just, like, stuck out, like, stuck out as just, like, a roadblock at all? Or did everything move smoothly? Uh, it was over four days, and, I like, we were pretty... I think the... I think we rehearsed, like, quite a bit pr prior to entering the studio, but it was still... Um, I think when we went in there, we definitely realised that we have to work harder and harder and like just to get tighter and tighter mm. but um i guess the biggest roadblock was a lot of the stuff we were recording on wasn't ours because our stuff was broken at the time or needed repair so we were borrowing friends instruments and friends amps and and whatnot and probably not pulling like our home sounds or like yeah. so it was hard to get used to and uh, be proud but i think we did the best with what we could. There was a lot of stuff time. we'd never done before yeah, in terms of equipment or recording even techniques. Recording techniques. Yeah. So Which is like, good. It's always good to try different yeah, it was stuff. Yeah, it was a big learning experience in terms of professionality, um, whether it be in our practice or with just how a professional engineer conducts themselves. You know, it was definitely like really cool experience. Awesome. Yeah, the studio is like a magnifying glass. If something's not 100% in the pocket, it'll stick out like, you know, dog's nuts. So it's um, it's really interesting because there was a lot of times where it was like, that isn't as good as I thought it was in terms of the playing, not the um, the composition or the music. And mm. yeah. It's always really good. I think going in the studio always shows you how better or worse you've gotten since the last time you were in there. Yeah. Pushes you to get better. Sin, 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 sin! We're still joined 
thankfully, <laughs> by uh, a couple of guys from Suicide. Good Upstate death. Upstate are welcome. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, a couple of guys from the death metal band, Aussie band, uh, Jamie and Toby. How are you guys? Yeah, good. Yeah. Hanging in there. Yeah, hanging in there. <laughs> yeah, but you haven't yeah. got sick of us? No, no, not yet, hey. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, we're nearly finished. This is going to be a last segment. We're going to play one last song. So, like, it's it's weird. Like, I'm a massive metal fan. You know, I, I live, breathe, and metal. I have a metal show. Like, I'm, I'm reading a book about heavy metal. I'm kind, of, <laughs> kind, of a, kind of a douchebag. Wow, you're reading oh. a book. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Shut up, Alex. Um, but, like, I'm not really in touch with the scene. Like, do you do you guys feel the scene? Is that something you you kind of relate with? I'm well, uh, definitely involved in yeah, it. Yeah, I, I think we go to more shows than we play most of the times. Like, if there's a show with friends' bands or bands we like in general, we'll be there. Like, um, with the only exception being if we don't have money that weekend or anything and but we're usually at most shows we we'll generally it be, watch it like we go to a lot of metal shows a lot of hardcore shows like um, punk shows and yeah like that um it's good stuff you know yeah, we'll be there good music good mates will be there to hang out to listen yeah what do you reckon is the worst thing about the metal scene um go negative alex yeah i I'm think the, the worst thing about any scene and it's I guess more manifested in metal and like sort of niche genres as people taking it too seriously and and wanting to be the most knowledgeable person but in the most assholeish way. I think it's good to know or have an active interest in the scene you partake in and like I'm obviously like I love reading about metal and downloading as many demos that have sort of gone astray or like been going under the radar but I think when you use that to belittle people or go against people then and you're just being a dick rather than an actual metal fan like mm. uh you know share the wealth if you know a good band tell a mate that might enjoy it you know a lot of judgment of others for their yeah. musical preferences or like oh that's not really black metal or yeah. it's not <laughs> it's not cult <laughs> enough you know? yeah. i mean if you like if you like something uh passionately then i think you should share the love rather than put other people down that don't like that i mm. mean if you want to include other people and and uh, sort of make them more aware of something that's maybe not so well discussed do that instead of talk shit on them because they yeah, don't yeah. know you know we're just all that thing thing spreading like, love um, how i mentioned before we live in a city where every touring band will um inevitably stop and there's always shows on and i think a negative thing is um people get people jaded. taking for granted like taking that for granted you know some people will um won't go to a show because they know there's going to be another thing the next week mm. where I think a lot of people should just be going to everything if they can. Yeah. You know, if they yeah, I mean, people just get, and it, whatnot. it just goes back to the people being too picky and, and like if you were in somewhere that maybe didn't get music all the time, you'd just be more excited to see any, any show that rolls through, but double edged sword, I guess, you know, yeah. more people, more people at the show, but also more people that are jaded about it and would not, not come out if it's not exactly what they like. Yeah, we're a fortunate city. Like, imagine living somewhere where there was a, a metal show once every six months, once every nine <laughs> yeah. months. Yeah, so it's like, that metal band's lucky. coming in town. Wow. Yeah. Um, yeah. So speaking of shows, you guys have got a couple of shows coming up. Uh, do you want to talk about where, where, where you're heading? Uh, yeah, we start tour, I guess. Like, I mean, it's we're already on it since we've been in Adelaide on the weekend, but the next stop will be uh, a week from today in Rockhampton, uh, playing at a cafe, which will be interesting. And then we'll be doing the Total Attack uh, Festival in Brisbane with a uh, huge lineup of interstate and international bands. A lot of bands going from Melbourne too. Yeah. So, um, and from there we'll go down the coast playing Grafton, Newcastle, uh, Sydney, Canberra and Melbourne again. So it's going to be do a bit of a whirlwind two weeks since we're driving up and back. We'll have like five days drive from Melbourne City to Rockhampton through the bush and that which will be i guess a bonding experience for the new <laughs> members and stuff we'll see how crazy it gets <laughs> awesome so um that melbourne show is gonna be on the 8th of may any uh people in melbourne want to check that out guys thank you so much for joining us thank you for having us yeah thanks for having us wish you all the best of luck with the tour and um i hope to hear some, some more material from you soon because uh you've got me hungry <laughs> that's coming up yeah yeah we'll awesome. keep you guys posted